Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Love Healing, the podcast. This time, I'm all alone. (laughs) But that's okay, because I am talking about something that I not only love and believe in, but that I also utilize in my everyday meditation practice. Um, As a matter of fact, I'm very rarely seen without wearing a piece of jewelry that represents something to me, whether it's on my hands or arms rather, um, or around my neck. And so specifically today, we're going to talk about what I typically wear around my neck, which is a mala. And malas can be bracelets and they don't have to be very long, long necklaces. So you can get a mala that is 54 beads, a mala bracelet that is maybe 27 beads, could be even 21 beads, depending on what your practice is based upon. Um, But I traditionally wear a mala that has 108 beads. So we'll dive into that a little bit and um, get to know why I use it and why many yogis use them but you don't have to be a yogi to have it or to wear it so you will kind of set your own intention there so here we go what is a mala a mala is simply a string of beads that are used in a meditation practice it is a tool to help you count mantras or um, intentions or affirmations even, and acts as a tactile guide as you sit in silence. Malas can be made of many materials. There is typically a tassel, though there does not have to be. So there can be a charm at the end or something that is of significance to whatever type of mala it is. But a tassel can represent our connection to the divine and to each other. There is a guru bead. The guru bead is said to symbolize the guru from whom the student has received a mantra being used or recited. And it pays homage to the student guru relationship. So this is especially in relation to yogis, of course. Overhand nodding. So a true sign of traditionally crafted malas is overhand nodding, which not only makes the mala stronger, but it also provides the perfect space for meditation. And here's a quick history. Mala beads have been used by yogis and spiritual seekers for thousands of years to help keep their minds focused during meditation. They were used for a special style of meditation called japa, which means to recite. The term mala is a Sanskrit word for meditation garland. So what if you're not a yogi, you say? Or what if you don't want to use this as a spiritual and or religious tool? Okay, that's fine. Let's talk about non-attachment. So non-religious or non-spiritual uses of a mala. For many, malas have no religious or spiritual meaning. As mentioned previously, there are commonly worn, they are commonly worn as physical reminders of positive intentions. So like when I said you could use it reciting mantras or to remind you of an affirmation. Um, When wearing malas for this reason, it's simply a way to consistently give yourself a gentle reminder of whatever you choose to associate the mala. For example, a reminder to treat yourself well by meditating and exercising often, in addition to treating those around you well, or to remind you to give yourself a little bit more love. In addition, some people will occasionally be curious and may ask you what your mala is, if anything more than just a wardrobe accessory. This enables a great opportunity to share your positive intentions with others And what does that do? Brings more positivity into your life. So quickly, there's a few different types of japa malas. There's different types of malas beyond japa, right? Because you may have a Tibetan mala or an Egyptian styled mala. Um, it, It just really just kind of depends. Even a rosary in Catholicism is a type of mala, right? So Tulsi wood malas, which are considered to be a sacred basil wood and it is said that when using a Tulsi wood mala it increases the spiritual power of the prayer. Then you have Rudraska malas 
which are said to help lower blood pressure and create stability within the entire system. Crystal malas, which is usually what I am wearing, um, it allows the crystal energies to balance the chakras and help to um, neutralize negative influences. Sandalwood mala, which is believed to promote tranquility. You have the Nav Navagara mala, <laughs> which is made up of semi-precious stones representing the planet and the solar system. So if you're into astrology, that's a great one for you. Um, you have the Bodhi seed mala, and the uh, Bodhi is a Bodhi tree. And that is said to be where Buddha sat for many, many years until he became particles. So that helps to embody the sattvic nature, right? That even keeled, unfazed, unbothered nature of a Bodhi tree. Rosewood mala. And the rosewood mala is considered to be good for the skin. It helps improve circulation and strengthening your individual aura. You have a lotus mala, which um, is typically associated with wealth. <laughs> it's usually an oval shape. It's brownish or black seeds are known for cooling and calming and just bringing in that focus. Uh, parad mala. And parad has been used in ancient times. It's considered to be a pure and auspicious metal. So people have used it traditionally for medicinal purposes. And then japa malas, which are just the most common, right, that we use now with or without spacer or marker beads, with or without a tassel, as uh, woods and stones and crystals, etc. Let's talk about gemstones quickly because I love gemstones and that is the stones that I will typically use. Sometimes I do use um, the what are those beads? They have, you could put oil on them, the diffuser beads, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I have also used sandalwood beads. I love those. The Reduska beads are awesome, but I am wearing, so if you're listening, head over to YouTube so you can watch. But if you're watching on YouTube, I'm wearing a crystal mala. This is jade and amethyst and also fluorite. So, and it does have a tassel. But gemstones have been utilized for healing purposes for ages now, even way, way back into ancient Kemet or Egyptian times. Over the centuries, people have been making research about how healing beads can affect and improve the health of those wearing them. It is believed that there are magic, I'm saying magic, but really it's magnetic, <laughs> magnetic powers in these sparkling stones and crystals, which have proven therapeutic and effective in treating ailments. The practice of improving one's health with the use of these gems is referred to as gem or crystal therapy. In yoga practice and meditation, the energy of these stones are said to surround the body and gives it the ability to absorb energies that will help in healing the mind and body. A lot of practitioners have testified on the boosts that semi-precious stones give every time they practice yoga for good health. So here you will see a couple examples of malas that I have made. And let's say using mala beads for your meditation is an invaluable tool. Yoga and a deep meditative, for yoga and a deep meditative practice. The mala is used by holding it with either hand, even though traditionally it's used by holding the left hand, being held in the left hand. You start just after the guru bead and do your mantra meditations while holding every single bead in between the thumb and index finger. So you want to literally, I'm gonna pick one of mine up. So I have one here that does not have spacer beads and we'll kind of go into the anatomy of a mala in a moment. But as you are repeating whatever it is you um, want to invoke. So if you're saying, I am loved, right? You're gonna just repeat that, I am loved, I am loved. And every single time you take your fingers to the next bead. And having that knotted knot in between each bead really helps to keep track 
I know that some people are also using elastic now so that you can wrap it around your arms a little easier. Um, but traditionally, like I said before, it's gonna be knotted so that you would have that advantage of really feeling where is the next one, where is the next one. And this does have a tassel on it and is adjustable in the top. Not all are. So, you know, again, everything is going to be just kind of based on the maker of the, of the mala and your purpose. And remember the guru bead is not counted. So the bead that is right above the tassel or charm that closes it off is not counted. It's traditionally the 109th bead, unless you have marker beads, which the one that I'm wearing does. So you, this marker bead is where you will pause, take a breath, recenter, refocus, and then continue on with the repetition of the mantra or affirmation that you're focused in. So why 108 beads? Well, there's many, many reasons and many schools of thought here, but specifically in ancient Vedic traditions, 108 was the number of existence itself. The sacred number is seen all over multiple ancient cult cultures from 108 sacred yogic texts to 108 sacred sites throughout the country and 108 marma points or sacred sites within the body. Traditional malas have 108 beads. Even though, again, the number of beads can vary. So if you have a bracelet, it's going to be less. If you have a shorter mala, it's going to be less, anywhere from 54 to 27 again, or multiples of three or nine. The most commonly stated and accepted reason is that one represents the source, right? In the 108, the higher truth or universe. Zero stands for humbleness emptiness and the willingness to learn and finally the number eight is related with infinity eternity and timelessness it's also considered a new beginnings number there's a formula that has gone into this as well so six times three times two times three equals 108 there are six senses of a human being sight sound smell taste and touch also thought so that's the six one. <laughs> wow, this is really challenging my lisp here. <laughs> and I've worked very, very hard to get rid of it. Um, whoo, three. So there's three times, right? The past, the present, and the future. Two conditions of the heart. So you have mind or intention, and then you have pure or impure. Three disturbing emotional states, or what they call kleshas, which is like, dislike, and indifference. So the next time you are meditating with your mala, just keep the universal truth at mind and or what is the actual benefit that you want to get from it while you're utilizing it. What is your purpose? What is your intention? And that's really going to be the most important thing. So no matter how many facts we have about malas and what the crystals and the stones mean, it's all going to boil down to what is your intention? What do you need more of? What do you want to remind yourself of? And how do you want to really give back to yourself? And that's going to always permeate out into the world and how you present yourself to everyone else. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> so I have to talk about me just a little. Um, you'll see the slide which has a bunch of stats, but basically I have been teaching yoga for over a decade. I love, love, love it. I've dived into many, many different types of yoga, even, and my most favorite, Kemetic yoga, which is the, again, ancient name for, or the original name for Egypt. So Kemet is Egypt, and then we'll do a little bit of research on that and have a show on that next season for sure, 1000%. And that really just brings you back to the alignment and the purpose of the postures, which is co to connect the physical reality, right? Our body as we're moving it into these poses with our breath or spirit or mind or source. 
right? So it's the uniting of all of that, the mind, the body, and the spirit. If you've watched some of our other shows, you've seen that I've kind of dived into some channeling, into some Reiki, into some this and that. All of these tools are great. Individually, maybe they're not enough, right? Or collectively, maybe it's too much. So you just kind of filter through what you need, what you want, what resonates with you, what doesn't. I'm never going to say, you know, you should do this or, you know, only my way is the right way. That's just, I do not subscribe to that philosophy. Um, but what does work for you, you definitely want to lean into that. You want to lean into what makes you feel good, what makes you happy, what makes you smile, what makes you light up. And sharing that with others is always going to be so fun, right? Even when it seems daunting, it's still fun because it's still you. So as long as you're authentic and that is a challenge, I think for all of us, you know, if we're having a bad day, you can't show up like, Hey, everything's great. This is great. I'm great. <laughs> right? Otherwise, you're going to look like a crazy person or just say, oh, it's fine. Yep, that's fine. It's fine. Oh, everything sucks and it's falling apart, but it's fine. Okay, take a breath and then reset yourself. And this is where malas are really, really handy because you can grab a hold of it. Remind yourself what is the intention with it. Remind yourself what do these beads mean? Why am I wearing this? What is this? Okay. Oh, let's start again. Things really can be great. We really can reset our mood. We really can reset our focus. And I really want to continue to bring this to all people, but especially to people who look like me, people who are like me, um, you know, moms of sons, women of color, business owners, creative thinkers, right? All of that. And I just hope that some of this really does resonate with anyone and everyone and of course i'm going to do a shameless plug and say you can order a custom mala from me but doing a simple google search there's lots of etsy stores you just kind of look through and find the ones that work for you and really think about what you need more of in your life is it love patience kindness forgiveness um, prosperity fertility what is that and then go on the search for that mala feel free to reach out to me I'll do an energy assessment and make one that is specifically for you I love doing that but you know it's not always the most easy way to get a mala right so to go on a website and just pick one boom 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 done <laughs> or wait a few days and get it for me Either way, when you see me and you see me wearing one of these necklaces, whether I made it or one of my friends, please know there is a reason for that. And I hope that your reason brings healing and love and goodness to you. So as you're choosing what may be right for you, you might be asking, well, what is a mantra? So even though I have described it as a type of affirmation or something like that, a mantra is actually a Sanskrit or Tibetan word um, or phrase that is used as a focal point in Japa meditation, right? And so <clears throat> you can say it in Sanskrit. So there is one that I use, especially when I'm trying to get over obstacles and things like that, which is Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha. And that is just saying that I am releasing any attachment to outcomes and overcoming obstacles. Obstacles are being moved out of my way. Um, so you can do that. I have found some Egyptian uh, mantras and things like that. You can say things like I said before about, I am loved, I am supported, I am cared for, I am smart, I am kind, I am brilliant, all of that, right? So it's anything that is going to really fulfill a void that is in your energetic, emotional, mental, or spiritual life. It's where you can reground yourself, reconnect to yourself, and really speak to your inner and highest good or being. There are three main types of mantras. So you have Bija, which is a seed mantra, Saguna with form, and 
Nirguna, without form. The Bija mantras are usually one syllable like Om and Ram. So if we were to touch on each chakra, right, it would be like Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Hum, Om, and then sometimes silence. So that would take us from the first to the seventh, okay? These can be used individually, but are most often incorporated into Saguna mantras to empower them with their special seed energy. The Saguna mantra invokes the forms of the individual deities like Om Namaha Shivaya and Om Kali Ma. So now we are talking um, in the Hindu realm. We, realm. we are talking uh, about like Indian and Vedic traditions. And please note that all of those things also still stem and come from Kemet or Egypt. Once the ancient Egyptians kind of left through Egypt and traveled down through the Indus Valley, the Dravidians and so on, these practices are not new. Just like ancient Egyptian deities like Aset became Greek deities and then called Isis, right? So nothing that we are saying now is going to be different. It's all different names, all different things, right? Depending on where you grew up, what part of the world, what is the religious practice? What is the belief system? What is the culture where you are? The Nirguna mantras originate from the Vedic texts and are thus the oldest type of mantras. These mantras do not reference any deities and their words are very difficult to interpret so they are considered to not have a specific form. Examples of Nirguna, Nir Nirguna mantras are Aham Brahma Asmi, Soham and Aham Brahma. So when you're choosing your mantra, again, just tap into yourself, tap into your energy. And one way to do that is to just take a few long, deep breaths in through the nose, out through the nose. Take cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Um, there's so many different, and this is now giving me the idea to do a show just about breathing because it is so important. And through the practice of pranayama, which is a focused and dedicated breath work practice, you can really drive energy um, through the body however you need to, wherever you need to, and in specific ways. So you can do that to just kind of feel like where's, what's speaking to you? Is it in my stomach? Is it below that? Is it in my heart? Is it in my head? Am I having a lot of headaches? What does that mean? And then once you've got your mantra and you're ready to choose your mala, let me just give you a few different stones that tend to be the standout ones, that tend to be the ones that you can go to right away, recognize right away, and just kind of know what they mean. So amethyst, it's literally one of my favorite because purple is my freaking favorite color ever. Um, amethyst really helps with health, right? Beauty, clarity, uh, connection to source really opening up your consciousness into your highest good, your high, higher being, your higher self. Aquamarine, which is a light blue color. I love using that, it's beautiful. Uh, it helps with courage, with balance, with peace. Sometimes it's used when you wanna invoke some throat chakra balance. So if you're, um, if you're more of a talker, you might want to use aquamarine to bring some calmness to the throat chakra. It may be overactive. There is a there is a such thing as imbalance too much and imbalance not enough. So you just want to find the balance, period. <laughs> and then let's see. The blue lapis, oh I love, right? So it's wisdom, confidence, and prosperity. Um, I love blue lapis. It is, it, sometimes it looks like a blue jean. It's a dark blue and sometimes has like white weaved through and without. And let's see, rose quartz is another super popular. It definitely has to do with the heart chakra and with love, with love of self, with love for others, with love for your connection and divine source. Rose quartz um, really promotes harmony and positivity. 
And when you see this light pink stone, you almost feel calm. You almost feel the love. You know, it is very popular, especially now with all these pink things everywhere and spring is popping up. So it's a light color, it's airy, it's beautiful. Green Jade, which is um, gonna help with serenity, wisdom, and even power. So again, I am wearing Jade and when I'm in this, this necklace that I have on display with the marker beads, it does have jade and rose quartz in it. But I'm wearing this because I really, really want to tap into wisdom. I really, really want to tap into the power that is within and the pleasure that comes from igniting that power, the creativity, right? All of that and connecting to source. Again, this necklace has amethyst in it. And most of the necklaces and bracelets that I wear will have that. Hematite, and I'm actually wearing hematite on my wrist today. So hematite is this silver, you could get it silver, and it may also be uh, a gold, it could be a tarnished type of color. Um, but that really helps with optimism, courage, and stability. So, so great. And magnetic hematite can help with even arthritis. It can help with um, just little inflammation type of things that you might have going on in the body. And then lastly, I will talk about garnet. And garnet, again, is one of my favorite. I'm wearing it, it's the number one bracelet on my wrist today. And it is also my birthstone. So if you're a January baby, Garnet is your stone, get into it. <laughs> but garnet really helps with passion and creativity and determination. It's a grounding stone, it's a root chakra stone where we hold our stability, where we hold our security, right? So that's just a few of the stones that I love to use and that are typically weaved in and throughout the malas that I make for people because again I'm tapping into their energy we may or may not have a phone call before I make your peace but when I'm tapping into most people's energy especially in this day and time especially after COVID it's a lot of need for self-love it's a lot of need for finding that inner power the inner voice inner truth right wisdom connection to source. It seems like a lot of people are looking for the same thing, but just are not talking to each other about it. And that is another reason why this show exists. I want to continue to talk to people and I don't want to, I will continue to talk to those who have gone on their own healing journey and utilized their own tools and learn about those, whether or not I have used them. But I can say coming from a I would say a depression mode, like hitting rock bottom and feeling like, well, really, what does it matter anyway? And coming from that place of darkness and sadness and disparity and lack and just coming from that place for myself and finding the tools that I have found that I am sharing because I really would love for everyone to give any of these things a try. Right? Any one thing that brings positive or light into your life is going to be a good thing if you think so, if you say so. Because again, the life that we have is the life that we create and we're constantly co-creating with each other, whether we know it or not. Just existing on this planet together in this day, in this time, we are co-creating consciously and subconsciously with each other every single day because we all are connected and we all are a part of source but we have to acquiesce to that and we have to accept each other and we have to realize there absolutely is no lack there is abundance there is unlimitedness no matter how much we see things through a limited filter or screen or um, media, it doesn't matter. You know, there is enough resources out here on this planet for all of us to be billionaires, 
over and over, right? But if we don't believe that and we want to, you know, tear each other down or compete or whatever, it's not going to happen. So let me step off that soapbox and get right back to what is at hand and that is malas. You see a beautiful piece of jewelry, grab it, buy it. If it speaks to you, take it and utilize it to help bring some positivity and some love back into your life. Whether it is a bracelet or a necklace, whether you get it from me or from Etsy, all of those things are just extraneous circumstances. And you can utilize any of the tools that you find along this journey to help guide you to your highest self. I know I'm on that journey and I am a million miles away from being perfect, but I do absolutely do what I can to do my part. And I just, I am really excited about what's to come for the people that I've interviewed for myself, for my community, the community around me. It's really building up and really becoming such an amazing space. So as you click on the articles that are provided at the end of this show, and you browse through my website, and you browse through some Etsy sites, really find the stones that speak to you, that call to you, that when you see them, you're like, oh yes, that's it, even if it's wood. Because again, the basil wood, the sandal wood, the rudraska, all of those things still have power. They still have properties that invoke something and are rooted in something. So you decide what you believe, you choose what you want and continue to co-create in light and love. And I don't just mean that as a hashtag, I really do mean that in the most genuine way. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us this week for another episode of Love Healing, the podcast. Brought to you by True Align Holistic Life and me, Tiffany B. Please visit our website at truealignlife.com and follow us on Instagram at truealignlife. Big shout outs to our sponsors, The Fitness Collective, in Atlanta, which you can also follow on Instagram at fitnesscollective underscore ATL. As always, we'd appreciate if you would hit subscribe to our show on YouTube and or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss any new content or episodes. Feel free to leave us a review if you feel so compelled and let us know what you want to learn about next. What is fueling you? Tell us how you are sharing love to those around you and even for yourself. But for now, I look forward to our vibration elevation again next week. Bye.